Hey everyone! Today we're going to be using the scientific method to determine the exact amount of Mentos you need to get the highest Diet Coke Mentos geyser. So stick around to the end. The number may surprise you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You know, the other night we were watching Wreck-It Ralph. And there's a scene at the end where a giant Diet Coke and Mentos geyser erupts and saves the day. And that got my daughter thinking. How high could we get our own Diet Coke and Mentos geyser? And then I had the idea. I would go to the store and buy a ridiculous amount of Diet Coke and quite a few Mentos as well. And then I thought it'd be smart to grab a large igloo container Cut a hole in the top of it. And then using some fishing line, tie off a large balloon full of Mentos. And then I would thread the wire through a nut that I glued at the bottom of the igloo. Now from a safe distance, I could pull the string through the hole in the top. That would then cause the balloon to be pulled down, land on the nail that I glued beside the nut, explode releasing all the Mentos at once. All we had to do now was fill our igloo with a bunch of Diet Coke. This bad boy was ready and it was going to be epic. I had five cameras going. I had the overhead drone shot, the cropped in slow motion shot from the side, the even slower slow motion shot from below. We even had an awesome countdown sequence. Five. Four, three, two, one. And then it happened. Uh oh. Absolutely nothing. It was an epic fail. In retrospect, we clearly lost a lot of carbon dioxide in the transfer process. And we really were just guessing about how many Mentos it would take to make the biggest geyser possible. And that led to the next logical question. How many Mentos do you need for the largest geyser possible? So we then set out to solve that question. And this time we were going to use science to help us avoid another failure. This was the perfect time to introduce the concept of the scientific method. All students of science need to be taught the importance of the scientific method. It was created by Bacon. Not that Bacon. It was created by Sir Francis Bacon. And not only did he have the most delicious last name in modern history, he probably would have been a fan of the modern day turtleneck. The scientific method provided a standardized approach to conducting experiments, and it became an integral part in the scientific community, progressing the world from the Renaissance period to the scientific revolution, paving the way for our modern day technologies and advancements. So today we're gonna to be using the scientific method to help us explain the exact number of Mentos needed to create the largest Diet Coke geyser. At the most basic, the scientific method contains six components. Step number one is make an observation. When you mix the coat in the mentos, it goes... <laughs> Step number two is ask a question. How many mentos creates the highest geyser? Step number three, make a hypothesis. I think it's going to take a thousand mentos. Step number four is perform the experiment. For this experiment, I was going to use an old piece of wood to put our Coke bottles on. I had some 2x10 pieces left over from our vertical garden video. I also learned that my driveway wasn't very level, but with the use of some shims, we were able to fix this problem. Now all we had to do was set up our Coke bottles and make our homemade Mentos launchers. Making the Mentos launchers actually turned out to be the most tedious part. And it was actually quite painful because after every use, they got soaked in coke and you couldn't reuse them again. We ended up having to make like 15 of them. We later found out that they actually sell Mentos launchers for this very reason on Amazon.com. And they're pretty cheap and you can reuse them. We put a link in the description below if you're interested. So we're ready to get started with wow. <laughs> so we're ready to get started with wow. Wow. So we're ready to get started with round one. Here we have our coke bottle. It's going to be in increments of five. We're going to try and figure out which one is the biggest and then round two we'll go in increments of one to really narrow it down. So here we have our first geyser with five Mentos. Not a bad geyser. You can see it leveled off right at our fence. 
Now let's see what 10 Mentos can do. And somewhat to be expected, even higher. And now it was time for 15 Mentos, and it did not disappoint. It cleared the entire field of view of the camera. So we adjusted our camera for 20. It went high, but not as high as 15. So for round two, we were going to start again at 15 and then go up by increments of one until we got to 20 to see which one was the highest. And for the second time in a row, 15 Mentos came out strong. For the 16 Mentos launcher, we had an equipment failure. Bummer. 17 Mentos was pretty good. And then moving on to 18, it began to be clear. Nothing was going to beat 15 Mentos in our experiment. And with a few extra bottles at the end, of course it was time to let the kids have their fun with their own volcanoes. Whoa! 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 Step number five is analyze the results. And step number six is report your results. So we're happy to report today on our YouTube channel that the number of Mentos needed to create the highest geyser is 15 for a two liter Coke bottle. So there you have it. An example of, did a fly just fly? <laughs> So there you have an example of how using the scientific method can help you solve a problem, getting objective data and objective results. Because one of the most important aspects of this approach is repeatability, we encourage you to do this experiment at home with your children. Do this experiment to see if they get similar results. Or you can make subtle changes, perhaps using Sprite and regular Coke, or even different temperatures. So we thank you for watching our video and encourage you to continue to develop strong problem-solving skills in your kids. Because if they can answer their own questions about the universe through experimentation, well, the sky's the limit.